Hey guys, uh, welcome back to an architecture tour of Morrowind. I am Simon and this is the last video where we look at some real world examples of, I guess, city layouts I'm interested in. I'm not as interested in the actual architecture. I mean, this is Balmora, if you remember what it looks like in the game. I guess some Middle Eastern style architecture looks a bit like this, but you know, towns like Old Ruin and Cedrus Mora, there's obviously no giant mushrooms in the real world and we don't live in bug shaped houses in the real world. So, you know, a lot of this is fantasy, there's, there's not much we can look at in the real world to compare. But in terms of the town layout, if you remember, we have these parallel streets here in Balmora. In Old Rune we have these groups of buildings, and then in Cedrus Mora we have the central tower, etc. Well, I guess we'll look at a few cities in the real world where we can observe some patterns. And obviously real world cities are quite different from, from the towns in Morrowind. But first of all, let's, let's talk about grid cities. And I think a, a good one would be New York. It should be fairly familiar to most of you. Let's see, Manhattan is there. So even from here we can see the grid. Now what is so you see this grid going on here. So what is New York? New York is a colonial city, right? The Dutch and then the English established a colony out in the Americas and New York was one of the biggest cities. And the thing with the grid is if you plan out a city or if you have a, have a clear plan and you just want to if you have a fast expanding city, then a grid is very useful for that because you know if you need more buildings, you just extend the grid outwards, and you you get more you know you get you get more streets, and it's very easy to set up. Whereas, I guess if we look down to the south here, to this end, you see that how these grids are not aligned. So this will be earlier on in the development of this city before they set up the the uniform grid. You know, you can imagine oh we need a town here so they build a grid and then oh the town is growing, we need to build another bit so they add another bit. Oh we need more space so we add another bit next to the river. So this is not so obviously these grids here are not um planned at the same time, they're planned at different times and you just keep adding more and more and you end up with this patchwork of different uh, street patterns because of the disorganized nature of the planning and then later on uh, and then later on I guess someone came along and said okay let's stop with this stuff and just have a uniform grid so that everything's a lot easier and you end up with this. So you know, maybe you can you can come up with the same story for Balmora. Maybe they established the markets and the and the councillors and the great hall first. No, what's it? What do you call it again? Council hall or council chambers first. So you know, you have one pattern and a different pattern, and then uh, maybe you have a massive influx of settlers on Vardenfall, and so they just kind of put in rows and rows of houses to accommodate them. So, you know, that that's a plausible story, I guess. And obviously in the game there's not the same backstory. So that's Manhattan Island and you can see in other parts of New York. You know, you have these you have grids, yeah. And then you have these slightly different patterns. They're still grids. So and grids, you know, once again, they're quite useful because you just lay it out, and then and you get a very simple and very easy to understand 
pattern, but obviously you have this patchwork, so this grid was drawn at a different time from this and a different time from this, so they're all aligned in different directions, but they all follow the same idea. Um, what's another one? San Francisco? San Francisco? Is another city fairly well known for the grid? So you see here, <laughs> a very, very uniform grid. Although up here we get to the mountains and you get these curvy streets. These might be newer as well. I think these are newer developments. Let's get down to. So, yep, here we go. And San Francisco is not a. It's not a flat city. There's like there's a lot of hills. And, and in a lot of places, the grid would just go straight up and down the hills, which is not the most efficient way to, you know, climb up and down. But I guess it's easy to draw on a map when you're planning a city. You know, it's quite easy just to draw a grid and and lay it out. So, grid cities, and obviously all the cities in the United States are, can be considered colonial cities. If we look at other colonies, Australia and New Zealand are notable British colonies. So if we go to um, Sydney, let's say. So these are newer suburbs. Let's go to the city centre. So here, oh, that's interesting. There's not as much of a grid going on here. Which is interesting. I don't know the history of Sydney that well, so I can't say too much. Go to Melbourne, which is where I'm living right now. You see in the middle of the city there's a grid. So that's the original town. And then for some reason the rest of the town is on a different grid. So it's aligned differently. I don't know why they chose to change it. So this that's the first one and then later on they just added a different grid to it and this is quite uniform as you can see. Although there's a little bit of variations, you know, as you go into the details. Now so so grids are usually colonial because when you expand quickly then it, the grid is easier. So let's say let's go back to Europe. Let's look at Paris. Now this is what a, I guess an older city would look like. Uh, we, we, I guess this is a medi medieval pattern or, you know, when a city grows very slowly and very organically, then you don't have the ordered grid. You end up with this network of streets and they and it expands out in circles or uh, roughly in circles. And you see how nothing is parallel. And this is what happens when you add one building after another and without a clear plan you end up with a whole web of streets and then all sorts of interesting shapes with these houses. And this is I guess more similar to Old Ruin, although there aren't you know major streets here, but you see how how the buildings are formed in clusters, and Paris is I guess is more urbanized than that, but you end up with you know these courtyard buildings or buildings arranged around courtyards, so you get groups of buildings, as you can see, and there's a whole lot of them, so you know a group here, a group here, a group here. And the whole city is just a whole lot of little groups. <laughs> and you know, none of, none of the streets are parallel, which is funny. And also, maybe kind of confusing. I mean, if you remember New York, everything's just numbered. So, avenues and streets, and if you know which number you're on and which number you want to go to, it's quite easy to find where you're going. Whereas here, you know, it's quite difficult to navigate a city like this, except for 
you know these main axes and then these major axes would have been built after a lot of these buildings I think again I don't know the details of the history but I do know that in all these old cities when the street patterns are too dense or too complicated then you would or someone would you know demolish a line of buildings between key landmarks and then you know build a major road there and then that would form a oh this is this is the one and in Paris this is the main axis I think it's one end of it is here I believe or maybe not anyway there's a major axis going down here straight through there what's that so there's a main So this is the Grand Avenue. Ah, this is a triumphal arch in Paris. So the, the axis goes straight through the triumphal arch, and there's a another square there. Although the square's been taken over by cars, it's become roundabouts. Here we go. The obelisk. And straight through, straight through, until we get to the Louvre. And I believe it ends at the Louvre, I think. Yeah, it does. So, you know, someone would have built this major thing, major avenue, and as you can see, you have these centers with axial streets, so this is apparently quite important, and that's quite important landmarks and so on. And we don't see that here yet, but obviously that's much smaller than Paris. If we look at other cities, if we look at London and Rome, you see very similar patterns. So once again, you have these circular lines because you know the city expands out from the center. And again in the middle of it where well, we have the river Thames in London which makes things even more complicated because you have this winding waterway right in the middle of it. And then you have all these <laughs> streets. Once again, nothing is parallel. Everything's just a dense web of of streets. I guess in, in London there's row houses, there's not so much the the courtyard style. That's uh, London Film Museum. Let's see what we're looking at. Westminster Bridge. Yeah, so London doesn't have the grand axis like Paris does, but it does have the River Thames. Buckingham Palace. And let's just go to Rome. So quite clearly there's the circular ring roads around the city. And Colosseum is there. So once again uh, the dense web of streets. And Rome especially has seen a lot of you know, it obviously has a long history, and it has seen a lot of building and rebuilding and demolitions and reconstructions and everything. So it ends up looking like there's a lot of courtyards once again, like groups of buildings around courtyards, and I believe these streets would have been carved out of the existing city fabric. Oh wow, we get an angled photo of it. Not sure I like it though. Anyway, so I guess that's a 
a brief look at different city forms or different yeah yeah different diff city forms in the real world not too much more to say if I can spell the sci oops spelled that wrong Okay, not much more to say except that's the palace there. Alright, I guess that's it. I mean, it's difficult to compare the, the towns in Morrowind with real cities in the real world because the towns in Morrowind are so small. And so, and then also the, the message or the culture or the purpose of them are quite simple. Whereas cities are, of course, very, very complex and with long history then overlaying overlapping you know different different time periods and, and different owners and, and different even political structures and all that and so real cities are much more difficult to to read because there's so much more information in them. Anyway I think we'll end that there. Obviously if you're interested in, in cities and the history of cities you can just look it up on wikipedia or something all right i think that will end the morrowind architecture thanks for watching